I, okay. They'll point us. So, are, are we, we back? back? There we go. I we're back. I think we're back. What time is it? We're, we're getting there. We're it's making progress. 8 15. Eight. We've been on since 5. 4 30. 4 30. <laughs> we're doing great. Um, we're on to wait for everybody to get logged back on. It's a new show. So, every, every hour we do a new link. So, we'll give everybody time to, um, to get on and, and catch up with us. Because every time we take a break, we stop the show and we start a whole new show. But okay. um, I understand. Yeah, so let's just give everybody a second to get on and get ourselves caught up. Uh, and in the meantime, we've got Ed Cole, right? Right. I want to make sure I pronounce your last name right. Not saying it's spelled that crazy, but Ed Cole has a, an interesting job to me because it's something I don't know how to get into. And I asked him off camera before we started. Ed is an importer into the United States. So Ed's job, how long have you been doing this job? Uh, about 25 years. So for 25 years, Ed has been buying liquor, whiskey primarily? Absolutely. Scotch whiskey primarily. Scotch whiskey and bringing it into the United States. So your job is to buy it over there, pay the tax on it, pay the freight, get it over here, store it until you can find a distributor that can then off-sell it, sell it to liquor stores that then eventually end up in right. my, my house. Because in the U.S., we are what we refer to as a three-tier system okay. by, by federal law. That's a federal mandate. That means that I'm legally the producer, according to the federal government. The United so States I, federal I, government, you are the producer. I'm the producer. I bring it into the U.S., I then have to sell it to a distributor who then has to sell it to a retailer. It's a three-tier system by federal law. And they impose those regulations after prohibition to eliminate all the crack that was going on. Interesting. So I, to hear it ex expressed in detail about that way, I, I have a little different understanding than I did before. I didn't realize that it was that way. Yeah, um, and it's not that way in every country. No, actually, the rest of the world doesn't have the two, same three-tier system we have. If if you want to sell whiskey over in France and you produce whiskey, you can go and sell it right to the to the uh, retail person to me. Could could do that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no regulations. Yeah. Dang, you so got to move to France now. I guess. Yeah, you know that or we got to petition Congress. You know. <laughs> so Ed, what did you import here? Okay, so this is the Spain. It's a distillery that is in the Spain side. Um, and it's actually a distillery that's been running since 1965. Um, it was originally a flax mill, and they converted it into a distillery, been producing single malt whiskey for a very long time, but it's never been available in the US. And the reason is because they sell all of the malt that they can produce goes to uh, Asia. Everything goes to Asia. They're very strong over there. In fact, their biggest market is Taiwan. I was going to say, Kavalan, is that who's buying it all up? Or? Well, there's a bunch of them. But, okay. Uh, there's a bunch of them. But uh, actually, Spay is the number one selling single malt in Taiwan right now. This is Spay. Uh, this is Spay. This one right uh, So, love this. Oh, the Spay. whole line. The whole line. line. Okay, I, I get it. So, what you have here is their Spay, what they call Trutina. Trutina. Trutina, they, they picked the Latin names. Uh, for their marketing and that's that reflects a little bit about what goes on over in Asia Asia's market looks for this beautiful package. They want this really unique style of bottle um, they, They're looking for that particular thing. The other thing that's interesting is you see this strip Yeah, this ribbon strip the ribbon strip is designates the original the, the origins of the distillery the actual distillery itself is is tied in with uh, what they refer to as the thin red line. The thin red line were the soldiers that fought in the Crimean War, and they actually defeated the Russians. Uh, when they did that, they wore these red jackets so that if they if they got injured or shot, it wouldn't show the blood and they could actually go down and compete and, and beat these guys. Well, the distillery has honored that tradition with the thin red line. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of history to this distillery, a lot. Um, so what you're tasting here is the Tratina, which is their base malt. 
This one is going to see aged in, in bourbon cast only. All right. It First also is going to be. It's all brand new. Okay. Brand new to the U.S. Wow. But you're also going to get a lot of fruit component in this. Yeah, right? it's got a, an interesting balance. Um, and that's because this distillery will actually ferment their wort for 74 hours. Now, the longer you ferment your wort, the more uh, fruit component you derive from your, your malt. So most of the distillers will, will only ferment fruit. for about 40 to 50 hours. This extra hours that they do gives you that real heavy fruit component. I got it. Also this gives you nice. creaminess. This is unique. Uh, Forty-six percent ABV, guys, and I think it's every bit of that. I think it's a little hot, but it's got a really interesting fruity character. That I mean, on the nose, if I if I give it a really good hard sniff, I get that bourbon. I, I get that oak. I smell the oak yeah, in there. Right. But. On the palate, it's different than that oak that I'm used to. I, I don't. It's fruity. Is that okay to say? It's it's fruity, but you also get a creaminess, and that of course that yeah. comes from the size and shape of the still. I'm sure everybody's aware, or maybe you're not aware. The the exposure to the copper is where you get that creaminess. So if you have a lot of exposure to copper, you're going to get that real right. thick, creamy malt. Right. Less exposure is going to give you more of the acids. So if they've got a real, real tall right. still, it, you're getting more copper exposure and it's, you're going to get Bingo. more of that flavor, right? Bingo. Let me, let me answer this out. Okay. This next one that we're going to taste I don't want to is this. one called Tanay. And Tanay is actually uh, Latin for tawny. Tawny, so this is a tawny port finish. Tawny port finish. I, and I was gonna just comment on the color because it's not it's not a brownish color, it's more of a reddish rose. It's more of a reddish color, color which is okay. the tawny port. Exactly. Forty six percent. So a lot of similarities, this just has a finish. All they've done here is they've taken the base malt and aged it uh, six months in a tawny port barrel. Okay. And what was the age on this one? I don't remember. This is combination of actually eight, nine, and ten-year-old barrels. So that's one of the reasons for no age. I know a lot of folks are really upset with the fact that the companies are taking the age statements off. They have We're to not. do it. <laughs> well, they have to do it because their old malt's gone. It's it's gone. Well, that's all we hear. Yeah. And and you know, McAllen, uh, uh, Glenn, any of these guys are running out of old malt. Everybody seems to be accepting the fact that uh, the no age statements are now yeah they're okay. Well, this proves it out. I mean, and what they what it allows these distillers to do is to do a little bit of this changing that goes on in the batting. So if all of a sudden I I'm short of eight-year-old malt. Okay, I can put in some nine. I'll put some 10, some 11, some 12 in there. Okay, and I still get my consistency. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, but I don't have that age statement on there because if I start putting 12-year-old on there, that price is going to go. Right. right. I got it. First thing, without even putting a nose in, is the color. Yeah. yeah. I, it, it almost has a, a white Zinfandel red, you know what I mean? Look at that color yeah. to it. It's really That's a, actually a good descriptor. It's uh, it's kind of got a pink color to it. It's not a dark color, but it's not a, a, a bright yellow. It's it's interesting. But you don't want you don't want to overdo the, the, the finisher. That's one of the biggest problems a lot of distillers have. If you put malt into the barrel too long and you overpower your malt, you might as well drink tawny port. Right. You buy, buy a bottle of port. Right. Right. Don't buy scotch. Now this has a, a nice port. Flavor without overpowering it. Yes. It's just there and it's, it's going. Good. Honestly, it's I think it brings the oak out more on the nose to me. Uh, but it's still got that nice fruit forward that I got in the first. Yes. It's very nice. and, and that base is going to be there. And again, it's, that's the style of the malt itself. So any spay malt is oh, going to good. have that fruit component. Now, this last one that we're going to taste, you'll, you'll see. A big difference you're gonna lose the fruit although it's there but what you're gonna discover here is this is the peated version so for those of you who like the peat uh, this all is, right this is gonna be your dram 
So this is the, the, the peat version of this. Yes. And how is it peated? Uh, 30 ppms. So the, the malt the malt is hot at 30 ppms. Okay. So it's it's peated in a traditional manner as opposed to saying it's peated because we put it in an ex peated cask. Yeah. No. You know, I mean, it's peated in the traditional. So when you, and, and the process of making single malt, of course, is wow. you take barley, you soak it in the water, let the barley grow, it starts to sprout, convert starch to sugar, right? Drain the water off, and now you have to dry it. And how are they drying it? They're drying it with peat. Over peat. Right. right. And there's a few, few distilleries that are doing, you know, adding peat in different methods. Yes. And, and I don't know if those yes. are considered real peat or not, but I mean, this is a traditional method. This is method. really nice. This is a traditional. It's, it's got the peat, but it's got the fruit also. It smells oh, it's it's no really soft. It still has it the smells cream. so much yeah. softer. The that's yeah. that's kind of key. So much softer. So we, we still have 46%. Everything else is the same. 46% unchill filter, no caramel color. These are all left natural. So, Ed, what's our availability on these and, and well, what's our price point? And again, they just came into the U.S. and um, Dennis has them here at the dining table. So, they, and he just received his delivery. Uh, the most expensive one is going to be the peated. That's going to be about $59. This guy right here, Fum Fumare, Fumar. Fumari. That's Fumari. $59. Dang it, uh, that's the best one. The, <laughs> that's my favorite. The, the uh, Trutina uh, is about 55 and the Tanay is about 45 So it's all very reasonable. Yeah, I, this one really is. It's a soft peat, but it's really enjoyable. You, you know what's interesting? If you taste um, a malt that comes from Isla, this peat is different from Isla because this peat lacks the iodine. Right. There's no iodine. It's, it's much softer than that. It's soft. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You're going to get iodine from any mold on Isla, like Lafroig or Lagavulin or Ardbeg or any of those guys, because what happens is the storms come in off the coast. They come from east to west. I'm sorry, west to east. The first landmass they hit is Isla, and so they dump all that, that component that they pick up uh, off the ocean. the ocean. By the time it gets over to the other side, all that stuff's gone. All you're going to get is so just the smoke. Right. Exactly. So the peat that's processed over on the eastern side of Scotland is different than the peat on the western side. It's really Did you, is, are you talking about this? How do you pronounce this again? Fumari. Fumari. Uh, uh, which is Latin for fire. Uh, I think this one's really I guess my only other question is how many other whiskeys are in their line? Uh, quite a few. Yeah. I've got uh, an 18 year old over the table. I couldn't follow up too much. No, no, no. This and was so, great. And, and how many whiskeys are you importing into the United States for our, our US, well, US? My whiskey total? Yeah. Oh. Um, I import from uh, Ian McLeod. I've got uh, eight whiskeys from them. I import from these guys. We have uh, six total in the range so far. Uh, I import from, um, uh, I just picked up a new uh, range from um, uh, the Hart Brothers. Uh, so I'm importing their range. Uh, they have 15 whiskeys. And you do uh, business in how many states? Uh, we're in 44 states. Holy moly! So you're a busy guy. Uh, yeah. You are a busy guy. You know, I'll tell you what. This is one show, and I tell Dennis this all the time. I will not miss this show. I do shows all over the country, and there's some of them that I just can't do because of time. I will not miss this show. This is my favorite, favorite show in the United that States. Makes, that makes me feel good as a Hoosier, right? I mean, he really wants to come here. Dennis, Dennis has done a, such a great job on this, on this whole thing over the years. I was at his first show. So this is number nine? Yeah. I was at number nine one. Daniel. I'm going to tell you what, that's a good sponsor right there for the show, guys. Come on down next year. Come oh, yeah. Right. For anybody that's watching this, you got to come to the show. It's fantastic. We're, we're really thankful for Dennis. I yeah. mean, we've uh, we've gotten lucky that he's within driving distance so we can pick up some bottles that we couldn't get otherwise. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. He's made some good suggestions to us, stuff that I probably wouldn't have picked off his shelf. Sure. Um, and, and he's been a really good friend, and uh, he's really helped us along in the last two years. Yes. So uh, yeah. allowing us to do this tonight was really something else. Last year we were we were out there, you know, tasting, um, and this year he said you guys got to do a show. He wanted to showcase the, the social aspect of Scotch, and I really think we've done that. I mean, 
we've got so many people that watch and that we share channels with. Uh, we call it the whiskey fabric, and it, it really is a show story. I mean, yeah, that's what got us started. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. I, I can't believe that you brought these three on our show and shared. I I really want to talk to you a lot more off camera because you're really interesting in fact what you do. I mean, it blows my mind how, how you got into what you're doing. How did you stumble into this? I mean, and, and what's kept you in it for 25 years? And how did you expand to the size you are? And You know, I'll tell you what. Uh, one of the things that probably is the, it's the toughest job to do is stand around and drink single malt with friends. <laughs> It sounds awful. It's, it's a, a it's hard a rock job. job. I'm, telling I'm telling you it is. Right? Thursdays are hard for us. Man. Every <laughs> Thursday we do that, Ed. So whenever you're in Indianapolis, if you want to pull up a chair, you've got a single malt scotch on our bar. I'd love, I'd love to do it. It'd be fun. That's All right. Awesome. Well, be back fun. to your table. So okay. you Thank got you. a couple more for us. Thank you so much for coming around. You can leave this here. Sure. <laughs> this is Ed Cole. They, they were all Unfortunately, there's some other people that may want to taste it. Oh, yes. yes. And you need to let them have it. So, well, you got to let them taste it because they've never had it. No, this is it's interesting doing, stuff. It's doing very well. I'm sure. They're all great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Ed. you so much, Ed. All right, guys. Wowzer, dude. That was killer. That was amazing. I, I was listening to and talking to some other folks here, and it's just amazing. I mean, this, this guy is well from the college. Dude, I would have never that bought good. that stuff off the shelf. I wouldn't know what it was. Um, they good? They had to be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they were all very good. I know, the peated oh, one yeah. really, really yes, Guess who we've got here pulling up at 8.30 right now. Blocking the camera. It's all right. Look at his back. This is our guy. You're going to love this. We're live. Okay. We're live. Oh, yeah. We're live. That's great. We're still going. That's fantastic. So we've got a couple of different things for you. We didn't think that we'd be able to provide the new uh, Star 2017 oh, okay. belt window stand, which is great. We won't tell everybody. And no, no, no. You didn't see that. <laughs> uh, here's some Art Vega. No, this is the new, the brand new release from Art Vega. The first permanent release in the Art Vega range in 10 years. This will continue to make forever-ish. This, we won't. This was a one and done. So let's okay. start here. I figure, and then we'll go that So way. let's start I'm off with, who do we have here? Huh? <laughs> um, everybody out there wants to know when you show up with this bottle. Like, we know who it is. Um, so uh, briefly, course, I'm Dan. I'm one of the U.S. brand ambassadors for Glamorgy and Ardbeg, two extremely uh, beautiful distilleries that make exquisite liquids but couldn't be more different from each other if they tried. So uh, here with Lamorgi, of course, it's going to be an unpeated coastal North Island single malt Scotch whiskey style. And here with Ardbeg, coastal Southeast Isla, big heat monster salt sea. That's what well, she's Brian. known for. Exactly right. It's beautiful, stuff. beautiful stuff. So we'll start here with the Astar. Now, the Astar. Oh, well, let's take a oh breath. sorry, let's take yes. A breath indeed. Indeed. Are you having a good night? So far. How's, how's the expo going? We've done. Uh, at the table, we've been having loads and loads of really fantastic conversations with people. We are also in the back doing our big virtual reality. Yeah, tonight. tell our folks about so, so they've got this whole room dedicated to our bag that you put on virtual reality glasses. And what do you do once you go virtual? So up until about three weeks ago, there were only three consistent marks of our bag available in the U.S. That was our bag 10, Ugadol, and Ugadol. Ugadol. Bracket. So when you get into the virtual reality, there's a clip dedicated to each of them. The 10 year and the Vision to the Island and the distillery. Ugadol is a bit of a hike up to Loch Ugadol, our water source. And then at the Cory Brecken, you go out to the Cory Brecken, the second largest uh, marine whirlpool on earth off the coast of Jura. And then we dump you into it. Uh, you survive. That's pretty cool. I didn't <laughs> you survive. It's okay. You know, to be fair, scratch a sniff to that. Awesome. Wait, they do no, because exactly. they pour all three yeah, of them while well, you've got, got your glasses there. on. And we you actually drink. have some some incense cones made out of island peat back there. Oh, as well. yeah. so, I gotta get some of those. I yeah, lost some of those from my indeed. fireplace. We'll yes, yes, Holy sure. cow. <laughs> Awesome. This is so yeah, I wish you guys were all here so you could try it. I haven't gone over there. We were lucky enough to put the glasses on last year. Probably not the same I experience. I do too because this is an upgrade. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. 
Damn. But I'm really excited about this. Uh, so one. anyway, be a lot of fun. we've got I wanna before we dive into the goods, I know there are people out here that are saying you've got an art bag ramp. Time out. I gotta ask this dude a question, right? <laughs> so, yes. To be fair, we have talked about Dan many times in our show. Yes, we so have. We're very so to have him. if there's anybody out there, Drew, scroll through these or me. I don't know what we're missing. Our uh, our tech guy is lost in a bottle of bourbon somewhere. <laughs> and that's okay. Well, I'm not sir. mad at him. There he is. <laughs> You're fine, man. Scroll through the comments. Well played. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame him. I had to sit down. Oh, easy. He said his feet are numb. There's too many bourbons in the gut. No. <laughs> um, so we might have a lot of, of comments okay, for, for Dan. Great. Yes, but indeed. We'll get to him. You guys, we're going to break into these. I have a feeling he's got an order in what she wants to do. Well, this. I think we should go for the unpeated stuff first, and then we'll go for the yeah, yeah, a little like better. That. Although, this is quite advice. a bit higher ABV than this is. Really? Even the playing field. So, what do we got? So, this is 52.5 ABV versus 46.6. But this is obviously more aggressively peated product. This right. is, uh, this is going to be a bit rounder, a little bit more honeyed, more vanilla bean forward. Back in 2008, I'm where they produced the original star between 2008, well, 2007 and 2008. And then we stopped because the cast that we're using for this, the Morgi original got to be such a popular product that we could no longer devote those resources to this product. So when our second in command, when Brendan McCarran came on to the project about four years ago, he wouldn't shut up about begging our master distiller, Bill Lumsden, to re-release a version of the star. So Bill finally got this sick of asking that. <laughs> Is that how it went? I asked him, and he said, fine, put, a, put some bench blends together, let me know what you got in mind, and we'll see. And uh, the bench blends came back, they were delicious, beautiful, spectacular, and so Bill said, yes, let's do the 2017 version of the star. So this is, again, a one and done. We may do a stars in the future that will be village dated, not quite sure. But this is again uh, with a star 2017. It's its own thing. It's its own moment in time. So one and done. How many cases released? Good point. Uh, don't know the answer to that, but the amount that you get here in Indiana is probably. He's going to give a bottle number. <laughs> Thirty, probably thirty-five six pack total total for the state. Six pack. Oh, okay, so we're over a hundred bottles. Yeah, you so you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance. <laughs> yeah, when you guys are connected with uh, with Dennis and mine and say, well, you'll be okay. So this you'll bottle is all things. about the cast. It's absolutely right? all about the cast. So when you're looking at Glamorgie original, our flagship expression for Glamorgie is based on bourbon oak maturation, ex bourbon oak cast maturation, first and second fill. Okay. Ten percent of those casts were casts that we had built to our specs. We had uh, the, the trees chosen based on our preferences, which is slow growth white American oak from the Ozark Forest. Of course it is. Seen, uh, rings an inch in terms of rate of growth. Very slow growth. Ideally, trees that grow up in the shadow of other trees, so they have a leaf canopy but no branches. So there's like three of them. There is. And yeah. you took all. So these casts <laughs> cost about five to six <laughs> times as much as a regular bourbon cast. So the reason that Lamorgi original isn't ninety dollars a bottle is because only ten percent of those casts go into original. This is a hundred percent of those casts. Ah, yeah, fifty-two five cash. ABV. So this is a bit like original, a bionic version of original. The original was an astronaut in the seventies that got in a horrific accident and was rebuilt via technology. <laughs> That's what you have here. The Lee Majors, uh, for all of you who are at least thirty-five. So is it true to old. assume that the cost of those casts are way more? Way higher, than five to six times in terms of uh, the times. price of those casts. Wow. But there, there are. Ours from the beginning, we lease them to the bourbon industry for almost exactly 40 years, and then we get because you have to, yep. <laughs> yeah, just to season them a bit. And we do some virgin oak stuff, both at Glamorgie and at Ardbeg. It's not virgin oak, it is ex bourbon oak. We just owned, designed, created, and had fabricated these casts before they ever saw the job of What an interesting process to think about the cost and the recuperation of cost, exactly right. Because you bought the wood, built the barrels. You lent them to a bourbon distillery for a while because they need them because they have to have new age, right? Do, that's new exactly, so we recoup some of that cost for the, that wood, and, and we wanted that flavor anyway in that char. <laughs> it's just yeah, what a story, man. What a story, right? 
So this is all, not only those cats, but this is all first fill ex bourbon. So like the orange is first and second fill, the star is just first fill ex bourbon. So I will warn you a bit if you're game. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, if he's gonna twist my arm. I will, I'll twist everyone's arm in sequence if you'd like. He's not twisting anybody's arm, but I'll beat somebody up for a drink. What's our, what's our bottle <laughs> price on this? You're gonna be looking at a, somewhere between 85 and 95 so <laughs> No bottle's no coming home. <laughs> Bottles coming Except out. That one is apparently free, which is fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be interested to see what you guys think of this. Based on, I know that you're familiar with the Glamorgy original flavor profile. Yes, we are. We uh, we just had some signets. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What bourbon is used for the cast? We uh, there's a non-disclosure clause, a clause that keeps me from telling you that it may be the most popular whiskey in Tennessee. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me, folks. Thank you. <laughs> so 52.5 maybe. B. 52.5. You smell the oak in there. Absolutely. So if you think about what's going on there, if you looked at why do we get so freaky about uh, ring content, uh, 12 to 16 rings an inch, it turns out that in the spring, a tree is going to throw off what's called spring wood or early wood, which tends to generate chuckles online. But spring wood is much more porous. Summer wood, the lighter part of that ring, of course, are much smaller. It's dense. So if you have uh, uh, spring wood is a little bit more brittle. Uh, summer wood is a little more flexible. So structural stability plus ideal absorption rate, you're looking for slow growth. And because there is no, because you only have a leaf canopy at top, and you don't have branches on the sides, you have very few nuts. And nuts are sources of leaves. I mean, this smells like fresh wood. Like this. Yeah. And, and so this is three-year, air-seasoned, uh, tight grain, white Ozark American oak, heavy toast, light char. Basically, a number one char after about a 45-minute toast. Right. And how many years? At least, yeah. I can't say yeah. in this format. It's a non-aid statement whiskey, at least. Right. Okay. So we're looking at 8590 NAS, which is not crazy there's no, been NAS's that I did I said wood the malted man cases you're gonna love you had to do it I even said I almost said morning wood but I didn't know it. Wow. I said he's talking wood. about a hard bag that's a different taste than the smell I'll tell you that much wow, that's really good. yeah 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 definitely and it'll take a little bit of did I bring it I meant to oh I did brought some water in case you're interested I think it takes a few drops of water and does some really compelling stuff. To I got to be honest, it's it's hotter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fifty-two and a half percent. So okay, fair enough. It's going, which it's going to hold a little water, but um, so you would smell that heat in those Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't no. burn your sinus. The original scar that came out in 2007 slash 8 was 114.2 proof of 57, 1 ABV. So this is a little bit lower than that, a little bit creamier, softer, rounder. We kind of so, felt like cast drink, the original cast drink the scar was a big, big, big whiskey. Uh, uh, the fellow behind this project, Brendan McCarran, houses the 52.5 was a, was a pretty ideal way to put it out. So neat. Honestly, Right off the bat, I can smell them around. I can, I, I oh, get, yeah. I get the new make, but then I get that creaminess. It's in there. It's very soft. It's creamy. Smell a little bit of the oak. Did you, uh, did you put some water? I on haven't yet because right, right, right. with original and the wow. star, they it yeah. tends to go a little bit more like grilled yeah. beans, pineapple, yeah. toasted coconut, yes. grilled beans, yeah. softer, yeah. rounder, yeah. beautiful stuff. All of it's, that. She's oily. Look at that. Yeah, big oil. The, 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 the two huge differences, I think, between this is an original is this is not your filter. 52.5. Wow. Loads and loads and loads of that creamy shortbread cookie note happening there. I get the pineapple and the coconut yeah. right up. Where is I get like pineapple. Meat the original. Original. Yeah, water, yeah, water brought out. pineapple. Like a toasted yeah. coconut. If you move it to original and you try original meat, it's like pear, pear oil, clove, ginger. You add a little bit of water to original, peach, pineapple, toasted coconut, vanilla bean, cream, rounder, mouthfeel wow. character. The water really yeah, it's off the same thing. I yeah. cut this to, a, you know, maybe, I don't know, 48 ABV. So, I like the meat, guys. 
I like it neat. I think the water just rounded it out and made it a little bit more yeah. smoother. And, and I, I, I think I could drink this one neat or with water, to be honest with you. Yeah, it, it was, but they're both different. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think it, it it goes back to my mood drinking. I'm a mood scotch drinker, depending on the mood, what I want. And so I might pour this and sit down and be like, this wasn't what I was in the mood for. I'll put that couple drops of water on and bingo, I'm right in the zone of what I wanted, what I was looking for. Honestly, um, this would pair with a lot of good food. A lot of, yeah, yes. There's, of I can see some pairings going you on. Could do, you could do this with seafood. You could do a sort of a glazed scallop kind of center. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crush yeah. That. All that. Yeah, yeah I love Absolutely. the oil. It's delicious. No, I, I actually like the meat and the water, but I prefer water, I think, because it gets, the balance is almost perfect with the water. The nose and, and the palate. Yeah. The, the meat was nice. It was, it was hot, intense. Was I think good. so. But the water just really makes it perfect when you finish. I, I'm with you. I really like it with the water. Beautiful. I think it needs a, a, a drop or two. I, I, I can I can enjoy it neat, but yes, it is, it's going to be a little edgier because of that heat. This is a wonderful expression. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I was really I was excited. super excited when they said that you may be bringing this one down. So. Yeah, the original star was one of my favorites, clearly, and I felt I had to cut that one back as well. But when we redid this idea, it wasn't just a uh, blanket restatement of something we'd already done, which we're kind of allergic to it. We're more we've done it. With the exception of the core range or the 18 and the signet, we tend to not want to repeat ourselves ad nauseum. Right. So when we decided to redo this, there had to be a Twist. There had to be a little bit more in-depth reasoning for uh, you know the re why does this need to exist again? Right. Did it? It's far different. Like the hard of it. It has a similar DNA, of course, because it's the origin. But if you side by side them, they're not the same whiskey. And I actually, I'll give the nod to the new. This is really, it's good. really, really good. And hey, if I'm being is, honest, I, I, I honestly, the the original baseline entry level of I'm, I'm it's not I'm not a really big fan I mean I, it's not, it's not it's my great. thing but we've tasted different ones aside from that that I've just absolutely fallen in love with and I hate to say they're, they're kind of higher rank yes uh, yes the 18th the signet this is delicious. I mean, it, it is. It is. It, the elegance really is really wonderful. Really right. It's very fun. And I know that the signet's drawn a little bit of, of, some people are a little bit upset with the way they're malting. They're, they're, to me, I think it brings in a delicious flavor, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's so what makes it different, right? With signet, the, the big deal with signet is you're not really going to get a lot of messages from the bottle or even the box. It's a difficult story to tell because we're the only ones at this point that are roasting the bar. To make it exactly. Right. It's an aggressive roast as well. So it shows up on the palate as It does. Or tiramisu kind of it, thing. it does. Which is and some people right. are saying, you know, oh, you're going against, you know, the, the, the Scots guys. I'm, I think it's a great idea. Why not try it? If it didn't work, it didn't work, but exactly. it does work. That was one of those <laughs> things when, when our master distiller decided to start doing this roasted barley idea. It was a radical concept. For that reason, people felt as though it was some sacrilege. And if you think about alcoholic yield per ton of barley used, if you're an accountant rather than a master distiller, the idea of roasted barley is a terrible idea because your alcoholic yield per ton of 40% roasted barley mashed with is a good 30% low. Wow. So you're looking at that and going, why are we why are we killing, killing enzymes and, and dexterizing <laughs> sugars? Right. None of those things are gonna help us create more alcohol. You can't make signet taste like signet without it. So then you just have to kind of people. It's like when you meet somebody who's never had signet, it's a long story. When you meet somebody who's had signet even once, it's a very short yeah, story. It's, they they give me another journey. I want we're like, <laughs> we're fortunate this well, not fortunate, we we're very pleased that uh, signet won the International Spirits Competition's World Whiskey of the Year. Good for them, and, yeah. That's and, that's and great. deservedly so. I, I, hope, yeah, I really think so as well. The 2017 winner was Artbeg Committee Kelpie. I'm not just saying oh, that. Just yeah, it, that's nice. really hard to come by, too. I mean, <laughs> you know, really, we can get Kelpie. Anybody can get Kelpie. Was that uh, the bomb was so small? <laughs> and it's so heavy. I've been advocating this for this for a while. You got your liquid detergent, you know, and you can see in the handle yep. which is left. 
sick of needs that because the bottle's very heavy. It's, you don't yeah, know until you're, you're, you're down to the end. Exactly. <laughs> we we actually rushed out to the store. Exactly. We did that this week. We picked up our our sick and gone. Gonna, no, it's not. Oh, no, no, no we, we, we poured save a little it. I was getting ready to come over the, the barrel. I thought we had about a half a <laughs> like bottle. Like, now, right, no, now it's a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just by the time you get down to the bottom. To do that. So before we run Absolutely. out of time, this thing's gonna shut down on us guys in nine minutes. Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. So are they not happen? There was a question in terms of what expression of Glam Orange this is. It's a Star 2017. It's a uh, limited release just came out maybe this week in a lot of states in the country so don't panic if you've never seen it before but do panic if you like it because it's not gonna be around very long right so if so you do you see it grab it just grab it so now we have the newest ardbeg this is ardbeg ano so it looks like it ought to be pronounced anoa and honestly you can pronounce it whatever you want because it's your whiskey and you're always right no matter what no uh, but we do tend to want to pronounce it ano as in i know it's really i know good. I know, I'll have another glass. If you've seen one of the videos that we did shot on Isla, it's a take on how uh, uh, Iliacs, uh, the residents of Isla, do tend to say, I know, quite a bit. The uh, the cake batter is strong with this one. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I've been finding right out of the bottle that it tends to have a kind of a uh, Mexican food, like masa and lime juice thing that happens pretty aggressively on the front end. But you need yeah, that for a good, you need that a good 15 minutes. It's really hard to find it after. Would it be safe to say I smell cotton candy? No, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> There's an underpinning of citrus, and I think in every yard bag. That's the nice thing about yeah, scotch whiskey. Yeah. You can say whatever you want. So really, it's it's your house. You're exactly yeah. right. You can say there's an underpinning of teddy grams. Look at these oh, guys. Totally sure. right. Burnt toast, marzipan. Are you kidding? <laughs> we know. Awesome. <laughs> you look like burnt toast. Come on, man. <laughs> These guys didn't know what marzipan was. So ah, yeah, they thought yeah. I made up a word. God, this thing <laughs> smells <laughs> delicious. Don't you just want to eat it? You're just like, <laughs> you can buy our shirts online, by the way. Thank you. I'm reading through some of the questions. That's great. So here with our I know this is, again, a permanent release. You see this one, there's not a whole lot of it. You see this one, and you fall in love with it. You're good to go. We're going to make that for a good long time. No real concerns there. As you walk through what the what the, the blueprint to the DNA of this whiskey is and how it differs from the Ardbeg expressions that have existed before. Right. We had three ranges. We had three expressions in the core range for years, 10 years, Guggenau, Corey Breck. Adding this fourth uh, expression in the range, my my primary concern was why? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Okay. Is it just to hit a price point? I really hope that, and I knew in my heart that that wasn't the point, that I really knew when I got a hold of Brendan, who's uh, Brendan McCann, who's responsible for making this happen. And he said, my walking papers were to try to make a whiskey. They came to me and said, Brendan, make a whiskey that is, make an Ardbeg that is both smokier and sweeter. And he said, that's a bit like making it. your date hotter and less hot at the same time. <laughs> it's incredibly hard to do. So what he thought was, I got this, I'll just put a bunch of Ardbeg in PX pads, and first fill XPX, leave it full maturation, and I'll be good to go. It'll be smoky Ardbeg, but wow. sweet. Okay. Didn't work. It's a beautiful whiskey, but <laughs> it wasn't work. really Ardbeg. So then he decided, okay, what is our mic? What did they call that one, by the way? Coffee? Or didn't happen. No, no, no. It didn't happen. It is uh, an individual. I'm just curious. So what he decided to do was. The identifiable backbone of Ardbeg is usually ex bourbon first, second, and third build, generally second, okay. third build head. So he dialed some of that in. We were doing well, and it was going great. Then he decided, nah, it needs a little bit more wood extraction. So the three parcels of, of cast management that exists in a no ex bourbon oak, just like 10 year, full maturation and first fill ex bitter him and his cherry cask, and then there's a parcel that's also first fill or virgin, number three char rare oak. So you take those two, those three parcels, and at the end of their maturation life, you drop them into a twenty-five thousand liter French oak vat for three months. It's not a it's not a further maturation because the vat itself it's is knackered out. It's French oak, but oh. it was rinsed to the point that it's not lending more flavor. It's only so allowing it breathing. The aging? It just no, it doesn't. It's just breathing. It's allowing for a knitting together. We call it the gathering vat because it's just a breathing, okay. knitting together kind of a thing. Uh, so this the reason that this is rounder, softer, creamier right out of the bottle 
it's more oxidized as a result of spending that time with that vast Fair enough. Of, uh, Answers the question that, you know, oxidation does matter. Uh, I think this is a really pleasant, it's really a soft. It's it's very interesting <clears throat> from the sweet fact of the nose is it's right up there in my cake cutting batter level. I love the sweetness of it. But as soon as you taste it, it explodes in smoke. Like that sweet, you get the oh, sweet tip and then boom, well nothing but smoke. Did you, uh, I don't know if you caught ever wins. So, uh, yeah, question. I was trying to read the rest of that question. Why did right. Ardbeg comment to whiskey? Because it is a big commitment. That's absolutely true. Um, it wasn't. It, no, it wasn't tested. It was. There wasn't like a like a uh, a field trial or a test group that we demonstrated it for. It was actually our two master distillers, Dr. Bill uh, Lumsden and Brendan McCarran, got together and thought, how do we make this thing smoker, smokier, sweeter? And rounder. So it was Bill's idea to actually build this massive, and it was a half a million dollar investment to make this massive 25,000 liter French oak cask. So at that point, you're pretty well committed to being <laughs> yeah. part of the core range. Double. Half a million bucks into it. I guess we're all in, boys. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I I, I love the Ugadol. I, I, it, it, we've done that, guys. Honestly, this, the sweetness of this, it, it, I love it more. I, I mean, I can sit down in my basement by myself and just enjoy this one. Not have to talk to anybody. Of course, I'm probably not going to drink three or four drams because it is sweet, but that's okay. That's yeah, what no, that's I'm fine. a mood drinker. That's what yeah. I go for. I go for something what I want. That question, sorry, I missed the name. What's it called? It's called Anoa. A N space O A. It looks like it ought to be Anoa, but it's an O. So the O Peninsula. It's the only rocky cliff face on Isla off the southwest coast, and we credit it for being our protector. It takes those big aggressive weather patterns coming off the Atlantic coast and, and slows them down before they get to we and our pals at Lafroig and Lagavulin on the southeast coast of Isla. So the O is our protector. It's shaped, it's round like an O. It's a, it's a nature preserve and estuary. The Red Cross in the early 1900s, early 1900s erected the American Monument to two American <laughs> ships that, that, that sank off the coast of, uh, of Isla. It's maybe the most beautiful spot on the planet, so we decided to name our whiskey. I know. I think you want to go boat. there. I don't know. I know. Well. Everyone, <laughs> everyone's going to have questions for the rest of the night. Everyone, we're running out of time, brother. We are. Um, Scott, you're right. So, it's beautiful. Um, we're just going to end it and say thank you because we want to walk back to his table with him to take over his leftover supplies. Yes. <laughs> so, if do. you don't understand that, then you shouldn't be watching because that's what we're going to do. Um, honestly, Dan, thank you so much for this showing us this. So showing us really this. I think our, our, our viewers would love to have you on. Thank, thank you so much. So we will every see time you we get a chance to talk. Yeah, yeah, come over to the table. We'll be up for that. We've got some 18, some signet. We've got all kinds of crap. Come back to Indianapolis. Done. Yes, I'm scheduled to before the end of the year, so I'll be here. Thanks, everyone. We'll do it again. Guys, we got to close it out here. We'll be right back to do just. Thanks very much. You think he's here? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess, guys, that's so, close. Yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching us. It's been a a jam packed show. Wow. What a show. I mean, this has been. Fun. I mean, it's been crazy. It's been chaos. We've, how long have we been trying for this? Three months? Four months? Uh, three. Like three months. Yeah, it's, it's uh, been a long time, and I can't believe it's already done. Wow. Right? Like Mike, do you have a good time? <laughs> Come on in Mike. here. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, somebody commented uh, a few comments ago that they were enjoying the mild level of piss that everybody was at this point. It, yeah, it's definitely the wheels. Have, we, they came off like an hour ago. We are it's getting worse so and worse. much more sober than we were last year at this point. No, that's true. Last year, <laughs> you, you, you should have seen us last year. We Pictures, were a hot mess. We were out mess. But uh, they didn't have to keep busy last year. <laughs> no, we had to work time. a little bit and drink some water in between. But uh, I don't know if know. I want to call it work this year or not. I mean, it, it was a lot of fun talking to a lot of these people. Um, we had a ball, really. I, all I the guests have been cards. All the yeah, guests have been awesome. Everything. Tell your friends. So, uh, it, you know. It's us. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're still dummies. We're still dummies. <laughs> we'll always be dummies. We're always dummies.
So, I mean, it's been great seeing, you know, I mean, we've gotten to have some of the guests on. We got Telex on here. Yeah, um, it's great seeing him. He's the, still around here somewhere. Got to say hi to him. The father son team out of uh, Chicago. That was Kokomo. awesome. That was cool. I'm going to go check out their videos. Uh, so, I, you know, Windy, and that was completely Windy off Windy of City. Uh, Windy Reviews. City Tasters. That's it. That's Windy it. City Tasters. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it's been great. Well, and, you know, thanks to Rob. Uh, from Whiskey in the Six and Scott from Test Dummies uh, and Aquavite yeah. for being on with us um, and kind of helping us, you know, get through everything that we had going on. Yeah, I love it. It's been you. awesome. Big shout out to Roy, to Whiskey in the Six, to Scott and the Test Dummies. Whiskey Fabric is uh, forever strong. Love it. Uh, appreciate everybody joining on that one. Appreciate you guys tuning in all night. Yeah, I've seen some of you guys have been here from since the beginning. Really appreciate it, guys. Uh, I think, you know what, guys? It would not be the ending of our show if we didn't oh end it appropriately with our number one King Alexander See, whiskey. You're gonna spoil us. This is how you start, and this is how you end. This is this is how you. This is how you finish. You sure are amazing. So, gentlemen, so, the Dalmore. I'm sure you guys have talked yourself into. Uh, uh, a sore throat at this point. Oh my god! Yeah, I think I this I have, is so. going to, to really. I was actually thinking you. about 45 minutes ago. I didn't know how we were going to finish that. Last Are you going to have segment. a drink with us? Absolutely. I just forgot my glass right there. Hold on. <laughs> you grab that. Oh, wait, I want you to show everyone about him. Check out this glass, guys. I need some of this glass. Oh, I got a little go, go big or go home. Yeah, so. This guy's been wearing around the stag all night. I have. So. How many people have said, "Man, I love that." I'm like, "Oh, he's." I'll see him over there. I've actually been uh, slightly assaulted on a few times from people like reaching across the table trying to steal my pen. So really I'm glad sometimes wow. it's a barrier. Right Get back. There. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> So, so was it a good show? It was a great show. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Up. How was the show? Was it a good good event? Did you good success? A lot of people had a lot of great questions. You know, I, I think I, from a number of people, I got uh, best dressed of the year. Yeah, so very I'll nice. Which is great. Absolutely. I'll take it. I was well <laughs> while you were waiting for us to finish up on our last guest. I was like, man, he's got a fitted jacket. Guy's dressed to the nines, man. Look the only thing he's you missing. For <laughs> sure, uh, he's missing uh, the he's for shirt. All right, all right. We, we could probably do that. We'll hook him up. Right. Yeah, we'll hook him up. So, so, I'll, I'll give you my card. You can just, we we, we could totally Absolutely. do that. So you had a good time. Where are you originally from? Where, uh, where are you coming in from? I'm coming in from uh, Chicago, actually. Chicago. Okay. Uh, so I, I live there now. I've been there for about 12 years. We've been with the actual distillery working for the brand for about a year now. Uh, putting a lot of investment into the uh, company. We're really kind of really showcasing the apex of the luxury scotch category. We're going to take it to the next level. We're not the number one luxury scotch in five years. We're not doing it right. So. Well, it's not apparently like you're starting at the bottom. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Most interesting man in the world, apparently. I know. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I'm interested in the uh, Constellation collection. I'm not going to lie. But oh, I, I've got to get like four yeah. more jobs. Well, yeah. I've, got to, I've got one full set left. So if anybody wants it, let me know. Dude, i got to sell my liver. Yeah. I only have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'll give you a kidney, but that's not enough. <laughs> well, there's a, uh, a few things that are coming out with the Downmore. We've got a Downmore 35, which is in the market, which I just recently found is actually a smaller allocation than a normal. Really is so it's usually about a thousand bar a uh, thousand bottles over a four-year period and we're going to only have about 350 so wow. baccarat crystal um, silver uh, silver stag uh, hamilton and inch is doing all of our uh, silver smithing and also engraving cutting no no corners with the details with this collectible item wow uh, we've got a demo 40 which just recently came out there's only 750 bottles in a four-year period each year is going to actually have the year that it's released on the actual bottle. Wow. So it'll be less than 250 bottles per year. So guess what? Released. Our kids yeah. are going to buy it at an auction. Uh, <laughs> <I'm> hoping, <right? laughs> Maybe. So so 20, hope, uh, yeah. Late 2018, we got a Delmore 45, which is going to be coming out as well. There's a few other gems coming down the road, including wow. some beautiful whiskeys coming out with Jura as well. So I'm very ah. excited about Jura. Well, hey, I know we're drinking Dalmore, but tell me about Jura. Tell me about Jura, if, if that's not sacrilege. Oh, that. absolutely not. If, um, uh, you know, Dalmore is the, the dapper, the luxury scotch within the category. Jura is definitely our craft cocktail. So we're seeing a lot of excitement from the craft cocktail community. We're seeing a lot of excitement from people that are looking to learn about scotch because it is an island style, so it has the peat, it has the sherry. So it's not the big Isla bombs that, that people always get uh, get afraid of, or it's not you know big sherry finish like a lot of people uh, tend to go for. It's a nice catalyst, so it's good for beginning it whiskey is. drinkers. It's good for um, uh, Highland drinkers that want to get into Isla whiskey drinking. Uh, plus, you know, we're also doing some really unique things. Uh, we've got a, uh, a seven wood, which is coming out uh, next year. So this is actually going to be un 
like the King Alexander, which is seven different, six different cast finishes, this is going to be seven different Persian wood maturation, coming from five different regions within France, specifically sourced for a particular wood type. Ah, wow. that's so a Jura. That's a Jura. See, that's cool. That's, that's a Jura. That'll be the I first time. I hope you guys are listening already to that. This is that. good news. I'm yeah, excited well, about yeah. it. I'm, I'm excited about so it. So you're gonna see some great you stuff know, come from Jura. And there's interesting things about that distillery just because of where it comes from. I mean, it's unique. It comes yeah. from the, its own island. It's on the island by itself, right? To get to the island, you gotta take a boat to Isla, and from Isla, you gotta take a boat to Jura. Right. So it's not like you can just swim over there or even catch a. I mean, it's a chore to get there it is yeah. but once you get there you have no cell phone service and the hotel has very limited but you have whiskey <laughs> you have great whiskey you have damn good whiskey that's all you need amen exactly. i'm going you go to the one bar in town and they've got 32 different selections of jersey choose from so wow absolutely so the tough is part is is which one do you start with because you're going through all those you're going through all, <laughs> right? you're going through all of them for sure Wow. Boys, we are past our time. Yeah. Uh, yes. I just want to say a big shout out to Dennis, Whiskey Expo, Dennis, Dalmore, all the guys who've been on the show, Glenn Moray. Ben, uh, yeah. we really appreciate you. Uh, appreciate it. Um, um, Aqua Vitae, Vitae Scott Chest Dummies, Real House, y'all. Whiskey in the Six, Rob. Um, all of our Whiskey in the Fabric folks, uh, whether it's Whiskey Dick, Bubba in the Beard. All you guys, uh, we Multiman really Cave. appreciate everybody. Multi Man Cave. Tuning in and, and being a part of what um, we've got. Montreal. Appreciate all everybody. Um, man, we've had a really good time. Yes, tonight. we have. And I hope you guys have too. Uh, we got some more drinks to do. We got we got our Telex back there. We're talking to him. Telex is waiting. We're going to hang out and relax. Coach coming I don't off. think so. I think you're kicking our ass. Yeah, I'm not kicking yeah. our ass. I'm going to say we're going to get the other. So, hey, so. <laughs> you guys, sorry Thanks, guys. we missed our Thursday night live show. I hope it was worth it to wait till Friday. Yep. Yeah. We're here. It was for us. Thanks, Cheers. guys. We'll see you. Wowzer.